Thank you, Mr. Raymond, for your time. So I'm, you know, you have been a banker for a long time. You must have an illustrious career over 20 years. Can you just share more about your background and um, what do you specialize in? Sure. I have been in banking and treasury uh, for the last 25 years, uh, working with uh, various uh, institutions. Um, I spent uh, the last uh, two years here in Cambodia, uh, seven years actually in Vietnam. And prior to that, I was actually uh, working in uh, Malaysia. So I have been uh, had the opportunity to work in uh, large, good organizations such as Public Bank, um, Standard Chartered Bank, uh, Hong Leong Bank in Vietnam, uh, Standard Chartered Bank in Vietnam as well, and now with Canadian Bank here in Cambodia. No, the, man, the names that you have mentioned are all you know, significant household names in each country. So what prompted the shift to Canadian Bank, would you say? Sure. I have been working in uh, the Indochina region uh, for the past uh, seven years before I came to Cambodia. So I've been in Canadian Bank for the past two years and uh, prior to that when the headhunter actually called me, what actually got me interested uh, to come across uh, to lead Canadian Bank was the fact that um, this was a very large uh, multi-billion dollar size asset bank and uh, there was this strong aspiration by our shareholders, by my chairman, uh, to be a dominant market leader in Cambodia. So that got me um, thinking and uh, that certainly um, provided me that shift to actually move to Cambodia. And uh, to me, size and scalability uh, are very important uh, components. When you actually have the size and scalability, I believe you can be a very dominant uh, market leader in uh, any country, provided you actually have the right strategy provided also you actually have very supportive shareholders and board of directors, which I'm blessed because both my shareholders and board of directors have been extremely supportive. You have been here for two years. Is it a complete two years or you're just... Uh, it's coming to two years uh, by March next year. What's the experience been like, you know? You, is, do you think you've been in Vietnam and you've been in Malaysia, what's you know, the experience been like? Has it been different or do you think... The experience has been great. I certainly enjoy working with every one of uh, my colleagues here uh, in Canadian Bank. We have uh, a staff strength of close to 3,300 across uh, 60 branches uh, nationwide. And to me, it has been a very uh, good opportunity uh, to actually even learn uh, from my colleagues as well. You know, every leader of every organisation, uh, you know, to come up to be where they are, they're often influenced by someone or uh, experience. Uh, what would you say has been your strongest influence and who do you look up to, uh, you know, to have been where you are right now? I would say um, my dad, uh, as well as my uh, Christianity upbringing, uh, has a strong influence in terms, of, um, in terms of how I actually deal with things and how I manage things on a daily basis. My dad, for one, is actually a man of very few words. Uh, however, the words he speaks are actually very impactful and it has certainly uh, resonated and continue to resonate uh, with me. And I suppose um, on my Christianity background, to me, I'm certainly not religious. Uh, but I do believe in the existence of God and His greatness. Speaking of Ok Nya Pang, right? Uh, I'm sure in the field that you have been in sector, he's a name that everyone knows just by saying. What was your first and experience like, you know, working with him or meeting him, for example? Can you share? Sure. Um, I would I would describe uh, Ok Nya Dr. Pong as a very astute and wise businessman. Um, he comes out to be very sharp-minded aggressive as well, but yet kind-hearted and compassionate. So it's a very well balanced um, in, 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 in a person that I actually see in him. And uh, myself, along with my colleagues, we have utmost respect uh, for that man. You know, leading an organisation is not easy. Every, every organisation, every bank has its own objective, mission and vision. But Speaking of your own personal objective, uh, do you inject, what, what is it that you inject into the bank in terms of personal objectives and mission? I would say I am fully aligned with our bank's uh, vision, mission statement as well as values. So in fact, Canadian Bank has a very clear uh, vision 
we want to be the best bank in Cambodia. Best bank in terms of creating shareholder value, best bank in terms of uh, creating the best people, developing uh, the best uh, talent profile, right? as well as providing the best customer experience uh, to all our customers in Cambodia. Uh, in a post, you said that the bank believes in developing bankers with mentality, monster, attitude and behaviour. Could you further explain the term and how does this help groom bankers into becoming... Sure, I took that, uh, I took that uh, term out of uh, Liverpool FC's uh, coach, yeah, but I do believe uh, very strongly uh, that bankers uh, need to have this mentality monster uh, attitude and behaviour. So what do I mean by that is that um, if you, if you, it's a combination of both IQ and EQ. If you look at uh, bankers today, all bankers would uh, have some form of uh, banking and finance academic teaching. They would have some form of uh, uh, credit uh, in terms of that. Um, and it's important uh, that, we, that we look at bankers not just on the IQ side, but also on the EQ side. So what I mean is that we need to develop smart bankers as well as hard bankers. Hard bankers in the sense that they do not actually give up so easily. They are able to actually persevere. They are able to adapt. If you look at the banking industry today, globally, even here in Cambodia as well, there is a lot of uh, disruption that is happening. People are talking about fintech disruption, digital disruption, competition that is coming in. So I would really like to see Canadia Bank develop both smart and hard bankers. Hard bankers where they are able to actually stand um, and, 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 and persevere, right? Persevere, stand as well as uh, be able to adapt to all these changes and not give up so easily. Right? The tendency of giving up is obviously fairly easy, but we would like to see people persevere and actually press on. You mentioned that you know, when you have been in household names, I would say in at least three countries, uh, Canadian Bank has been a really big and successful name in the country as well. But speaking of evolution, uh, do you see there's more evolution to come? And uh, you know, where do you see the evolution of this bank, particularly in Cambodia? For, for Canadian Bank, um, we are certainly one of uh, the largest, one of the oldest bank in Cambodia today. And in terms of evolution, the bank has actually evolved in a positive way. Over the past 28 years, the bank still continues to actually evolve. And where I see the bank moving towards to is certainly leveraging on a few key enablers. Number one, which is our people. Our human capital, I've mentioned it many, many times at Town Hall, these are the most valuable asset to us. The second enabler that we are going to leverage on is actually around technology, which I mentioned earlier, we see a lot of disruption today. Uh, a lot of noise as well, right? Uh, from fintechs, from digital disruption. So we certainly want to stay relevant to the market and we are looking at leveraging on technology. There's a lot of work uh, that is actually happening right now, even as we speak, right? Uh, with my colleagues um, in various departments, uh, looking at how we can certainly automate, how we can certainly leverage on technology, how we can even simplify uh, some of the processes that we actually have in the bank. I see. Uh, speaking of years to come, uh, in the next five years, what, can you share your plans for the bank? and how do you plan to fit in with these goals? We want to remain the best bank in Cambodia, very much aligned to our vision of being the best bank uh, in Cambodia. Um, we want to be best uh, in both quantitative and qualitative uh, items. Quantitative in terms of both our balance sheet and profitability. So we are very honoured, we are very heartened. Uh, Canadian Bank has actually been awarded the best bank by balance sheet strength in Cambodia for 2019 by the Asian banker. So this was uh, an award which we actually hold very dearly. Uh, it's a very strong recognition of uh, what 
our shareholders, what our chairman, what the bank has actually built right, over the past 28 years. And we take a lot of pride in that. And we certainly want to continue to write on this to make sure that uh, we consistently achieve this status of uh, strongest balance sheet as well as profitability. And on the qualitative side, we want to make sure that we continue to develop our people, continue to develop our people uh, to, and to, to make sure that we, we stay relevant right, to, to the marketplace. And equally important is around our customers to make sure that we simplify our process, to make sure that we actually meet their needs. Everything that we do is very much centered around the customer. So product, services, we need to make sure that we come up with the right ones to actually cater uh, to uh, our customers' needs. So this is a, I think it's a good question as well. Sitting in that seat over there requires a lot of responsibilities and it's going to, you know, obviously you are in charge of the bank. And, in terms of work-life balance, what do you do outside work and what, what are the tips that you have for other leaders in this field as well? Sure. Um, exercise, eat well, say your prayers. I think these are the three things uh, I've been reminding myself since young. And uh, I think it's always uh, good to always have a very grateful uh, attitude and mindset as well. I think we, we all, in, in, any, in any areas uh, that we are in, in any roles that we are in, I think we need to be grateful and thankful uh, for the position that we are in. And of course, uh, we should never neglect our family as well, right, who has always been there to actually support us. The Kingdom is, you know, there's dozens of banks, you know, there's every corner, every street. What, but what makes Canadian banks stand out? We have a very strong heritage. And I uh, would say from the marketplace, you are absolutely right, there are 46 commercial banks today. And uh, for a brand name like Canadian Bank, we take pride uh, in that position of being a strong and trusted brand uh, in Cambodia. So we are certainly one of the largest, uh, one of the strongest, and one of the oldest banks in Cambodia. And um, we will certainly want to continue to build on that strength. Uh, being, being the largest, strongest and oldest, we should not actually be complacent. We need to continue to build on our strength uh, to remain relevant uh, to Cambodia. And uh, we are also very, very uh, heartened uh, that our customers uh, appreciate uh, the branding uh, that we actually have today, right? And uh, I am certainly um, uh, working alongside uh, with my colleagues to make sure that we continue to build on this uh, position uh, that Canadian Bank actually has today. Would you say that's your competitive edge? Yes, yes. I, I believe our, our strong heritage uh, along with uh, the, the brand strength is one of our key um, advantages that we actually have uh, in the Kingdom of Cambodia. And uh, we are certainly also very appreciative because we have got a very supportive regulator. We also have a very supportive government who is actually very pro-business, uh, who continues to look at how they can actually support, not just banking, across the different industries and spectrum as well. I see. Yeah. That's a, thank you so much for your thoughts and your opinions. Uh, it was fantastic talking to you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you.